I'm Dr. Tom Mather, the Tick Guy from the University of Rhode Island. Take it from the Tick Guy. One little episode is all it takes to get a tick. Do you like my tick drawing here? You know, it's important to know a little bit about what makes up a tick. So they're maybe a little bit more complicated than you see with your eye. There's all kinds of features. The most important feature is this, this thing called the hypostome. That's what it sticks inside of you. These things are called palps. They're part of the head capsule, but they're really there to protect the hypostome because if something happens to the hypostome, of course, the tick isn't able to do what it's supposed to do, which is to feed on blood. I think one of the most important features of the tick is this thing here, it's called the shield. On a female tick, it takes up the first one-third of the tick. On the male, it actually covers the entire tick. You'd like to have a shield if you were gonna get scratched and everything as well. But the female tick can't have a shield on its whole body because it wouldn't be able to engorge, like take enough blood so that it can lay eggs. Some of the other great features that are important are these things called salivary glands. This is where the germs are. The germs are in the salivary glands and then they move to the hypostome um, when the tick is spitting. So it spits germs out and it sucks blood in. And it does this sort of in and out, in and out kind of a thing, but the germs are here. But when a tick sucks in the blood, it sucks in germs and the germs can be down in the midgut. At one point, as the tick is attached, the germs move from the midgut to the sal salivary glands. And that's how they end up being spit inside of you. Some people want to know what these things are. Maybe they've noticed them, maybe not. That's how a tick breathes. So oxygen goes in and through tiny little tubules actually goes to each and every organ inside of the tick. So we have the midgut where the blood goes and also the germs. We have the salivary glands where the germs go and then they get put back into you through this hypostome. We have this thing called the scutum which helps you identify ticks because the scutums are unique and they never change. They never change their size. If it's a plain scutum, that's one type of tick. If it has pigment on it, it's another type of a tick. So it's really important to know some of these simple features. Now, one thing when we think about permethrin is this. The tick has eight legs and they are touching the surface that they're on. And if the surface they're on has permethrin in it, that's how they contact the permethrin. And it works incredibly fast. And sometimes they fall off in about five seconds. Sometimes they fall off in about 30 seconds, but it's quick. And so somehow the molecule of permethrin shown here actually goes through the tick's legs and into the rest of its body and it affects the nervous system in some miraculous way. And it causes the ticks to become extremely excited. And as it's excited, it then will fall off. And within 24 hours, all of the ticks that had fallen off were dead. And so it's a, an, an insecticide as well as a repellent. And so that's the magic of permethrin when it comes to ticks.